Good evening. We're back again. We have a non-party Indiana Department of Corrections response to defendant's motion to compel deponents to answer certified questions. This is regarding John Gallipo's deposition and Sergeant Joshua Robinson's. Here we go. The Indiana Department of Corrections, a non-party by counsel, responds to defendant's motion to compel answers to certified questions and states... Procedural background. One, on September 23rd, 2024, Richard Allen filed his motion to compel deponents, including John Gallippo and Corrections Sergeant Joshua Robinson, to answer certified questions. Two, Mr. Allen did not serve his motion on the Department of Correction. Three, the Department of Correction objects to the motion with respect to the certified questions directed to John Gallippo contained in paragraph 6B, 6C, and 6D of the motion because those questions call for information protected by the attorney-client privilege. We have a side note. The Department of Correction takes no position on the question contained in the paragraph 6A. Four. The Department of Correction objects to the motion with respect to the certified questions directed to Correctional Sergeant Robinson contained in paragraph 7A, 7B, and 7C of the motion because those questions call for information protected by attorney-client privilege. Department of Correction personnel. 5. John Calippo is the former warden of Westville Correctional Facility. Mr. Calippo signed an affidavit in his then capacity as acting warden. That affidavit appears in the court record on October 10, 2023, as an exhibit to the state's response to defendant's verified motion for immediate transfer of custody. 6. Mr. Gallippo was deposed by defense on March 22, 2024, and questioned about his affidavit. The Department of Correction was present by the counsel at the deposition. 7. Joshua Robinson is a correctional sergeant at Westville Correctional Facility. Correctional Sergeant Robinson signed an affidavit in his capacity as correctional sergeant. That affidavit appears in the court record on October 10, 2023, as an exhibit to the state's response to defendant's verified motion for immediate transfer of custody. 8. Correctional Sergeant Robinson was deposed by defense on April 18, 2024, and questioned about his affidavit. The Department of Correction was present by counsel at the deposition. 9. Elise Gallagher holds the title of Deputy General Counsel for the Indiana Department of Correction and is an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of Indiana. Deputy General Counsel Gallagher provides confidential legal advice to the Department of Correction. Attorney-Client Privilege 10. In general, communications between an attorney and a client on a legal matter within the scope of the profession should be strictly confidential. Penn Cent Corp. v. Buchanan, 712 NE2D 508 515, Indiana Court Appellate, 1999. And also citing Coral v. Edward D. Jones and Company, 646 NE2D 721, Indiana Court Appellate, 1995. Internal question mark omitted. 11. Attorney client privilege applies to all communications between the client and the attorney for the purpose of obtaining professional legal advice or aid regarding the client's rights and liabilities. 12. The person claiming attorney client privilege must show that the consultation was a professional one and that 1. an attorney client relationship exists and 2. a confidential communication was involved. 13. Deputy General Counsel Gallagher was consulted in her professional capacity and provided confidential legal consultation for her client, the Indiana Department of Correction, by communicating with Mr. Gallipo concerning his affidavit, which pertained to his professional role with the Department of Correction. 14. Deputy General Counsel Gallagher was consulted in her professional capacity and provided confidential legal consultation for her client, the Indiana Department of Correction, by communicating with Correctional Sergeant Robinson concerning his affidavit which pertained to his professional role with the Department of Correction. 
15. Privileged communication are outside the scope of discovery. Indiana Trial Rule 26B1 and are objectionable at a deposition. See also Indiana Evidence Rule 501 Indiana Code SS34-46-3-1. Application to Mr. Gallippo. 16. The answer to the question identified in paragraph 6B of Mr. Allen's motion is protected by attorney-client privilege. A. Question. And so what were you asked to do when you got the document? Affidavit signed by John Gallipo. B. Basis of privilege. Mr. Gallipo's testimony was that he believed the affidavit to have been prepared by the legal team at the Indiana Department of Corrections. Example A at 1-1-19-17. That he had an in-person meeting with someone on the legal team. Example A at 1-2-0-15-12-1-2-1-11. The question calls for the response of what Mr. Gallippo was instructed to do by a DOC attorney at that meeting. 17. The answer to the question identified in paragraph 6C of Mr. Allen's motion is protected by attorney-client privilege. A. Question. Did they give you any reasons why the defense could not go see where Richard Allen was living? B. Basis of privilege, Mr. Gallippo's testimony was that the decision in the question was made by the legal team at the Indiana Department of Corrections, example B at 18011. The question probes the legal justification provided by the legal department. 18. Moreover, in order to compel an answer to the question identified in paragraph C, 6C of Mr. Allen's motion is unwarranted because, notwithstanding the objection, Mr. Gallippo answered the question. Exhibit B at 180.13. 19. The answer to the question identified in paragraph 6D of Mr. Allen's motion is protected by attorney-client privilege. A. Question. Do you know why they made that decision? Decision for a no-phone policy in Westfield Correctional Facility. B. Basis of privilege. Mr. Glippo's testimony was that he believed the policy decision to have been made by the Department of Correction legal team. Example C at 183.25. The question calls for Mr. Glippo to divulge the legal team's rationale. Application to correct Sergeant Robinson. 20. The answers to the question identified in paragraph 7a, 7b, and 7c of Mr. Allen's motion are protected by attorney-client privilege. A. Questions. I. Generally describe to me what kind of questions these were. Questions for affidavit prepared for Elise Gallagher. I. I. I'm not asking you about the what Miss Gallagher talked to you about. I'm asking you what questions you answered for the affidavit. I, I, I. What were those questions for the affidavit? B. Basis of Correctional Sergeant Robinson's testimony that he spoke with Deputy General Counsel Gallagher about the affidavit. Example D at 5511-625. The question directly seeks communication between Deputy General Counsel Gallagher and Correctional Sergeant Robinson for the purposes of preparing the affidavit, namely what questions Deputy General Counsel Gallagher asked or provided to Correctional Sergeant Robinson to assist in preparation of the affidavit. See example D at 5511-625. Conclusion. For the reasons stated herein, the court should deny the motion to compel as to the questions identified in paragraph 6b, 6c, 6d, 7a, 7b, and 7c. Respectfully submitted, Theodore E. Rokita, Attorney General of Indiana, Attorney Number 18857-49, by Aaron M. Ridlin, Aaron M. Ridlin, Deputy Attorney General, Attorney Number 31481-49. And there you have it. We see the Attorney General's Office getting involved, and we're hearing from Todd Rokita and Aaron Ridlin. We'll see you next time on Deb's True Crime Notebook. I think that's all for this weekend. Now, I will have some of the 
items that went along with this, the little deposition notes um, from the actual depositions, and I will post those in my community section on my page so that you can read through them if you'd like. We'll see you next time on Deb's True Crime Notebook. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell for all notifications, leave us a comment, and share this in groups with your friends. Have a wonderful weekend.